is Hans the Ramen Raider coming at you on a Friday, at least that's my time, with another episode of Instant Noodle Recipe Time, the show where I show you what to do with your instant noodles. And today I've got one that I found up in Richmond, B.C. at Lansdowne Center Mall. Uh, tomorrow's will be from one that I found there, too, at a place called Smart and Save. And, uh... Yeah, I'd never seen it before. I'm hoping it's new, because if I had missed it all these times, it's like, dude. Anyways, I would have missed it again. My wife is the one who saw it. Thank you, kid. But, uh, this one's by a company called Edo, and they have all sorts of different products. This is like a pack, spicy flavor, instant noodle, and it's from Hong Kong, so... Let's slap it together. Let me check and make sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cook it for three minutes with the garnish. And then at the end, you add in this, which is a dual sachet of oil and powder. with the pot. Can you see the pot? You can see the pot. So, noodles go in. And garnish goes in. While we were up there, what's cool about the Lansdowne Center Mall is they have something that you can't find anywhere in the United States anymore. Here's the vegetables. There we go. And you're probably like, what would that be? Canadians? Like, no, you can find Canadians in the U.S. But you can't find this particular store that may, knowing that you can find it up there, might make some people really stoked. What is it, you ask? It's Toys R Us. They have Toys R Us in Canada still, but it's gone here. So we go up there and, I mean, I remember well, the last time we went into a Toys R Us here in the States, it was a freaking mess, man. It's like the shelves and all the stuff was all messed up and just like, you know, I'm sure the people that work there work their butts off and probably worked a lot of hours and did all sorts of stuff but there just weren't enough of them that's kind of the way retail is gone these days unfortunately for those who have to be in it but up there there's enough people and they keep it going and it's really nice so yeah if you're like in the Seattle area and you have like a Saturday Go up there. If you got kids, they can take them to Toys R Us still. And that place is busy. I don't think there's any chance in a million years that that place is going to go out anytime soon. Which is really saying something since it's like you go to malls here. They're dead. I mean, there's, there's one. There's one in Bellingham called Bella's Fair. That one is dead dead compared to when I was a kid. There's one in Mount Vernon called Cascade Mall, and that one's totally dead. I mean, like, beyond dead. There's, like, maybe, as far as store occupancy, I would say it's maybe around 30%. And, uh, yeah, so that place is dead. Also, part of that is there have been all these mall shootings, so that doesn't help with people wanting to go into a confined, stuffy area. But then there's Alderwood Mall, and that place is always packed, so I I don't know what to tell you. At least when we go. Maybe during other times of the day it's not so packed. But people, You know, it, it's like, it's true. Walmart and Amazon have really killed a lot of retail in the U.S., which is a shame, because brick-and-mortar stores are pretty cool, I think. There's something to be said about going to the store, go, you know going out and it's like on the Brady Bunch you know <laughs> we just watched the two Brady Bunch movies they're pretty bad but it's like put on your Sunday best kids we're going to Sears 
<laughs> yeah, no more. But yeah, that's like I had, my family would get dressed up if we were going out to the like you know, go shopping and stuff. Those days are over. People go shopping in their pajamas. People go shopping. I mean, you've seen. Go on Google uh, the people of Walmart. People go shopping in all sorts of interesting attire these days. There's no like, oh, I'm gonna be out in public. I should care about what I look like. That's like, no. People don't give a crap. Anyways, I guess it keeps things interesting. But I've got this sachet. I didn't burn my finger. This one's, yeah, that's powder. And from the feel of it, the other one is oil. Ooh. That was not the scent I was expecting. It has a very strong... Oh, okay. I knew in the ingredients it said kimchi, but I'm getting a lot of seaweed hit from it, too. And there's this other half of the dual sachet. This is a reddish kind of oil. Get it all, get it all. There was some kind of little notation on the side of the package we can look at really quick. I'll give this a taste and then I'm going to put it back on with some other ingredient that I have. It looks neat. I'm really stoked. They're from Hong Kong. It's nice to be able to try brands and no nothing against Nissan. I love Nissan's Hong Kong stuff. But it's nice to be able to try stuff other than Hong Kong Nissan stuff because that's pretty much the main stuff we have here. Mmm. That I like, very piquant. Okay, so I've mentioned more than once about, you can go to like a Korean grocery and they'll have meat sliced really thin, like this. This is pork. And what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna drop it all in. If you're like, what's the red liquid in there? As my mother would say, it's the juices. That was my, f that's like one of my favorite memories. I'm like, oh, it's like blood. She's like, no, 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 it's the juices. It's like, yeah. Ah, uh, mom. <laughs> it kept me from uh, not eating it though. If I was a kid and I was like, oh my God, it's blood, yuck. So putting that back on. Uh, I forgot to hook up Rotato, so let me do that really quick. Little, it looks kind of like a, a, some kind of 
heat gauge. See? And it's not in English, that's for sure. Um What? Product of Singapore? Oh. Well, I'm confused. It's distributed by a company in Hong Kong. Yeah, product of Singapore. So what is this? Is this a Hong Kong product or a Singaporean product? Ugh. More research must be done. But, uh... Yeah. Interesting. So we're gonna use a bowl I haven't used in a long time because I figured, well, it kind of looks spicy. But nothing ever looks right in it, so we're gonna see if this does. And, uh... Hi, Mimi! Mimi... is free range. What you doing? Mimi! Let's see how this is looking. Oh yeah, that's good. So yeah, you just put it on, because it's nice and thin, it cooks up really quick. There we go. We got a little bit of pork for it now. So what we do is flip her over. It doesn't look so great boiled, but I mean, it, it works. It's still pork, and it's still nummy. There's some pork. Uh, eh, mm, ah, ooh, ooh. Yeah. I found something interesting today. So these are good until tomorrow, right? These mung bean sprouts? Generally, that means they're going to be bad. But I've been keeping them in the crisper all this time, and this time I didn't keep them in the crisper, and guess what? They're doing pretty darn good. They don't stink, they're not funky, they're not, like, goopy. And usually the day before they expire, that's how they are. So I'm curious if that's the trick, not putting them in the crisper. But they're definitely not crisp usually at this point. Got an egg. Hello, egg. Like a loafy egg. Oh, come on. Too goopy? Sometimes it just doesn't want to work right. But I prefer that it would work right. But yeah, I think it's just the curse of this bowl. I don't know. And spring onion. And I've been using it a lot lately, and it just kind of really blends itself well to make things a little bit spicier. Chili flake. And since we're spicy, we'll be dark and evil. Oh. There. And use some black sesame seed. All right, let's make it happen. Rotate up, if you please.
Alright, well cool. This has been Hans the Ramen Raider. Wishing you enjoyment of your noodles every day. And yeah. Have a good one.